Hello, I'm Stephanie Kim, coming to you from the LG Digital Studio at the Georgetown University School of Continuing Studies. In focus today, higher education and the labor market. I'm joined by Dr. Anthony P. Carnavali, Director of the Center on Education and the Workforce at Georgetown University. Welcome, Dr. Carnavali. Thank you for asking me. So, Dr. Carnavali, you're a labor economist who conducts research on higher education. What would you say is the most important factor for one to successfully transition from higher education to the labor market? Well, there's a set of rules, and they're relatively new. It still is true, like it was in the old days, that the more education you get, the more money you're going to make. That if you get a graduate degree, you're going to make more than somebody with a bachelor's degree. If you get a bachelor's degree, you're going to make more money than somebody with a two-year degree. If you have a two-year degree, on average, you're going to make more than somebody with a one-year certificate. But what is dramatically new in all that is rule number two. And rule number two is what you make depends very much on what you take, not how many degrees you are, where you go to college. Uh, your earnings depend more and more on what you take. So there's a $3.3 million uh, career earnings difference between the highest paid bachelor's degree and the lowest paid bachelor's degree. And rule number three makes it all the more complicated, and that is because of the difference in the value of fields of study, college majors, uh, you can actually earn more with less education oftentimes. Mm. So that 40% of people with bachelor degrees make more than people with graduate degrees on average. Uh, about 30% of people with two-year degrees make more than people with four-year degrees. Certificates, about 20% of certificates, especially technical one-year certificates, make more than two-year or the average four-year degree. So. Uh, it's, a, it's a system in which uh, there's more complexity than there used to be. You have to pay attention not to just where you go or how many years you go and what degree you get, but what you take when you're there. I see. Now, your views certainly underscore the economic value of higher education, particularly when you mentioned the fields of study, what you study, et cetera. But are there also other important values to higher education? And how do those values sit with the economic values? One of the realities of the American system that is different than the European system or other systems in the world is that we have always mixed very specific education, that is your college major. Do you major in history or engineering? But that's only about 40% of your courses if you're going to get a bachelor's degree or 30 uh, percent. Most of your courses are going to be outside your major. What we know is that in the end, getting that mix of specific and general education, those course requirements and all those other fields, improve your earning prospects, first of all, and make you more adaptable as things change in labor markets, as technology changes. And then the non-economic value of higher education is really quite clear. That is, people with more education are healthier, they have more successful marriages, uh, they are less involved with crime, although the increase in uh, higher education in America has also spawned an increase in white-collar crime, but a dramatic reduction in blue-collar crime, so crimes against persons, theft, and things of that sort. So there is a, a powerful non-economic value, and then the ultimate non-economic value is that in a democracy, uh, we promise every citizen essentially the right to pursue happiness, which sounds like a silly phrase, <laughs> but we're serious about it. That's why we've always provided more education than is required for jobs in our system. And that's about individual human development and individual aspirations, even learning for its own sake and not for any tangible financial reason. Great. That's, that's really fascinating. Thank you. Now, there's a, um, now in today, uh, for profit higher education. Now, it, it's a very hot topic. And these institutions claim to expand access to a wider degree of students uh, previously underserved by higher education institutions. But 
For-profit higher education institutions have also received a lot of criticism and scorn. What is your view of for-profit higher education? It doesn't matter to me, uh, and I think it doesn't matter to most Americans whether it's a for-profit or a not-for-profit institution as long as it delivers. Uh, so long as the institution produces learning and produces earning for the people who go there at a reasonable price, uh, it seems to me it should be uh, eligible for public support. Now, the difficulty we've had is the increased value of higher education in the American economy created a huge market and the for-profits rushed in. In part, they rushed in in places where the existing system wasn't working, that is, where it was not providing direct kinds of job training and where it was not providing education for less advantaged Americans. Now, so the issue is not so much whether it's for, prof for profit or not for profit. For me, the issue is does it deliver or not, and when it doesn't, it should be shut down. At our center at Georgetown, we've participated as expert witnesses uh, in a number of court cases that have resulted in shutting down almost 50 for-profit institutions. On the other hand, I know of many uh, not-for-profit institutions that perform no better and mm -hmm. do not deliver on their promise any better than the institutions we shut down in the for-profit sector. And in the long term, that's going to be the issue, is accountability in both for-profit and not-for-profit institutions. I see. So, last question. What future trends do you foresee for higher education and the labor market? I think in the end where we're going is that we're going to be living in a world where institutions matter less, that is the college you go to matters less, um, the degree level matters less and the subject matter is more important, which means that accountability in higher education, and you see this in adult education, your own field, the accountability in higher education will be by program. And we've built information systems. The Obama administration set, spent $760 million building out information that, systems that allow us to look at individual programs biology and engineering and heating, ventilation and air, air conditioning or whatever to find out whether they are justified in terms of the benefit they deliver relative to their cost. And that's where we're going. It's a, we're headed for a world in which uh, higher education is going to start selling its programs and it'll be less about the sale of the institution, uh, less about going to Georgetown versus UVA more about whether the, institu the institutional program you choose. Thank you, Dr. Carnevale. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, everyone out there, for watching. Stay tuned for more from the LG Digital Studio at Georgetown SCS.